Hello everybody. My name is Saurabh Chatterjee. I am a travel and documentary photographer. My dream is to make every camera owner a great photographer. I am the founder of CF Photography. In this session, we'll learn why post processing is so important. We'll also talk about dynamic range, which is a very important aspect when buying a camera or when working with your pictures. The very important thing to know here is every picture needs some amount of post processing. Now, if you are shooting in a controlled environment, you can minimize the amount of editing. So we have to try to get it right in the camera as far as possible. But when you are shooting in an environment which is beyond your control, for example, you are shooting a landscape or an architecture, you have to do some amount of post processing for each and every picture. One very important reason why I have to post process my image is to match the dynamic range of my eye. What is dynamic range? Dynamic range is basically the range of light that a camera can capture from the darkest to the brightest tones. Now here it is very important to understand that the dynamic range of the camera is much less compared to the human eye. So I'm going to show you this using a picture so that you will be able to understand it better. This picture that you see, this is how the picture was when I shot it. Though I was using a, a decent DSLR, I could not get anything better than this. I was having the fear of overexposing my brighter areas. You see this part. That's why I underexpose the image so that my this area is correct and definitely this part is underexposed. Now if I expose for this part, then this part will be overexposed. Now see this is the difference between the human eye and a camera. So with my eyes, I could see this part with all the details and this part with all the details as well. Now a software like Lightroom or Photoshop will help you get back all the details. Now you see this is I just did this very basic settings and and you see this is what we have now. So you can see the before and the after. Now this is impossible to get it right in the camera in one shot. So that's the reason I have to post process my images. The second is to match the output to your visualization. Here is another example of the dynamic range. This is how the picture was when I shot it. Now, uh, I remember it was very beautiful that time. So the sky was very dramatically glowing. It was actually raining and then it stopped and the sun suddenly came out and I, I got this picture. It was such a wonderful scene which, which I could not capture with my camera. This is what I got. I was shooting in the raw file format. So I thought I will be able to recover a lot of the details uh, close to what my eyes could see. After adjusting these, these things, I, I did the highlight, uh, shadows, exposure and after these adjustments, this is how I got the picture. Now this is very close to what I remember I could see with my eyes. It was absolutely golden and I could see these people but you see without post processing, this is how it looks. So this is another reason for me to post process the pictures. Now the next is to match the output to my visualization. So sometimes I might visualize an image little different compared to what my eyes could see. Now this picture, this is very close to what my eyes could see. I, my eyes could see a lot of details in the shadow areas. I wanted to exaggerate to make the dark areas little darker and the bright areas little brighter. So I increase the contrast. See the moment I increase the contrast and reduce the black, it is like these parts are getting highlighted, the other parts are getting dark. This is something which you have the control in post processing. Now if you think that during the film time, we never used to post process our pictures, people spend days spending in the dark room. So you see this is how they would post process. So burning and dodging was a very very important part of the whole process of making a picture. Or you can see this picture of Henry Cartier Bresso. So you see, this is how they would uh, mark different areas and apply different chemicals for different durations to get the output as required. So these are the reasons why it is very, very important to post process your picture. So this is close to how I visualize. I wanted the dark areas to be really dark so that I can see this thin ray of light falling on, on the monastery as well as on the Buddha. Now let us move to the next point how to shape the light okay so this is another situation if you see the before and after let me just show you how the before so this is how the picture was before you see this was in a raw file format so again it looks very dull and uninteresting and because this image also has a lot of contrast i am not able to see the details of the my subject again i did these things that you can see i use the auto settings i use shadows highlights dehaze add a brush textures and finally i got this image you see how this is looking before and after so i'm sure this is enough to convince you that every picture needs some amount of post processing and it's a skill that you have to learn uh, you can learn from youtube or uh, 
you can also do my classes. I do a class in Lightroom which will help you understand all the different features in detail so that you can make the best out of your pictures. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I'm sure you will learn something and apply it in your pictures. Thank you so much for joining me for this session.